So now we are starting our third lecture on helicopter dynamics. This deals with rotor notation, and I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now we have seen that the main rotor is a crucial component of the helicopter. And in fact, if you look at helicopter dynamics, the main rotor will play a critical role here. So one of the things we need to do is to define the different aspects of the main rotor using some scientific notation so we know exactly what we are talking about. So this is the pictorial view of a main rotor from the top. And here you see some of the definitions. So we take the forward velocity to act in this direction. And at this point, we have the angle psi is 180. So psi is the angle which essentially defines what is the location around the rotor disc at which you are in. So psi is zero here, 90 degree here on the advancing side, 180 degrees where the forward velocity is coming and 270 degree on the retreating side. The rotor is assumed to have counterclockwise motion, which is shown here in this direction. Now, any point on a rotor blade can be defined using two coordinates, that is r and psi. So these are polar coordinate representations of a point on the rotor disc. The distance between this point at the axis of rotation and the tip, that's the rotor radius. Now, since the rotor is rotating like this, when you are at size 90, you are on the advancing side because the blade is going in this direction. When you are at size 270, the blade is going like this, so you are on the retreating side because the blade is retreating backward. So these are some things which are very important to remember. I would recommend you come to this slide again and memorize this complete diagram. In rotor dynamics, we typically all the time refer to locations of psi. We refer to the retreating side, the advancing side, and so on. So very important to remember that the forward velocity happens at size 180. And if you can remember this, the rest of the things will fall out for you because if this is 180, then this is zero, and then 90 and 270. Remember that this entire angle is 360 degrees or two pi in radians. Sometimes people refer in degrees, sometimes they use the pi nomenclature or the radian nomenclature. So like I mentioned, R is the rotor radius measured from hub to tip, typically in meters, may range from three to six meters. Now, omega is the rotational speed measured in radian per second. Psi is the azimuth angle, typically degrees or radians. And psi is also the same as omega into T. Now, for a helicopter rotor, Rotation speed is constant, therefore psi is a measure of time. You can clearly see here that psi is a measure of time multiplied by the rotation speed. So in helicopter dynamics, we will typically talk in terms of psi rather than in terms of t. So when we frame the differential equations of motion, they are going to be expressed finally in terms of psi rather than in terms of t. That is a very important difference. Now, the radial location of the blade is measured from the center of rotation, which is at R is zero, to the blade tip, which is R equals capital R. And R and psi are used as polar coordinates to denote location of a point on the rotor disc. Returning back to our diagram now, you can see that if we were to use Cartesian coordinates here in terms of X and Y, you would have more complexity in defining all those points. Polar coordinates are very suitable for any problem which is based on a circular system. And here you have a clear circular system. So any point on the rotor disk can be completely defined by R and Psi. So now let's look at the blade top view. So here, this is an example of a typical rotor blade. It's rotating like this. Now, in general, the chord varies with radius. So this is known as blade taper. The word taper is used to essentially define the fact that this is varying here. And typical taper is, of course, that you have 
more cord at the root and you have less cord at the tip. Now some plates may have non-uniform taper. Typically most plates would have a kind of uniform taper and so on. Now essentially what this means is that the cord C varies with the radius. So C is a function of R as shown here. So we can define now one important parameter which will often come in the equations of motion for a helicopter plate and that is the moment of inertia of the blade. So this is I subscript B integral 0 to R MR squared dr where M is the mass per unit length MR. This is a very important quantity in rotor dynamics because in all places we are going to use this quantity. Of course, if you have a uniform blade, M is a constant and M would come out of the integral sign. That would be very simple. But in most actual situations, M would be varying with R. So you will have to calculate this particular integral value. N is the number of blades which we'll use in some further notations. Now, the rotor blade is normally twisted along its length and often linear twist is considered. So we would have something like delta theta is theta twist into R. So this means that if R is zero, delta theta would be zero from this equation. If R is capital R, that means you are at the tip, then delta theta would become theta TW into R. Typically, theta TW is negative for helicopter rotor about minus eight degrees. Uh, it's reasonably twisted but much less twisted than for example a proper blade would be so that's something to keep in mind now let us come to some very important quantities in helicopter performance and dynamics of course the first one is the rotor disc cross section that is a is pi r square so that is simply the area of the rotor disc r being the radius the next one is rotor solidity, and this is defined as Nc by pi r. And to get a physical feel of this, you can multiply both top and bottom of this with capital R, so you get this here. Now, if you look at this carefully, the bottom part is the total disk area, and the top part would be NCR, would be number of blades into cord into radius. So if we have constant cord blades, then C into R into N would be the area occupied by the total blades. So essentially sigma or solidity is the solid part of the rotor disc or the part of the rotor disc which is not air, which is occupied by some material presence. Now one more important quantity is the log number and log number is rho ACR4 by IB we already defined IB. Now here rho is the density of air, A is the lift curve slope, C is the cord, and R is the radius. So again, this is a number which tells you what is the ratio of aerodynamic forces divided by the dynamic forces. So one of the interesting things is that if you have a rotor code and you want to set the aerodynamic forces to zero, you can simply set log number to zero because density would be zero and then that would mean that you are essentially in vacuum so only the dynamics would be functioning. Now in the definition of log number we already discussed A is the blade section 2D lift curve slope, rho is the density of air, C is the cord. Now this lift curve slope is a basic property of the airfoil section so if you have any airfoil section you can plot the curve CL with alpha and then you can take the slope of this so that's a constant number which is provided to you for a typical airfoil section maybe 5.73 or 2 pi for a perfect uh, ideal section. Now alpha would be the angle the blade section sees with respect to the air M is the blade section Mach number which is sometimes used Mach number being velocity divided by speed of sound, speed of sound being 332 meter per second. Let's get back to the rotor blade. Now, if we get back to the rotor blade, rotation here, shaft is here, we have defined now the flap motion. 
Now the flap motion is defined as positive going up, so negative going down. Now zeta or the lag motion is po positive opposite to rotation. So this would be produced by the blade drag forces, the positive direction. And theta, the blade pitch angle is nose up pos positive. So this is the positive direction for theta. These three angles typically define the motion of a typical rigid blade. Let's go back to the cord or the side view. Now the side view, of course, you have the air fall section with the cord C, velocity coming here V, angle alpha seen by this body, lift being generated, drag being generated at the quarter cord location, which is the AC. Now pitch motion is the motion up on this particular point, which is the theta. Now, beta, zeta, theta, these are the degrees of freedom of the blade, simplest model you can get. Now, for a blade section, the lift acts normal to the flow velocity and parallel to the flow velocity is the drag. Now, all these forces, of course, act at the AC or at the quarter cord for subsonic flow, which is typical for helicopter blades. Now, the interesting thing is that if we are considering steady state motion, the blade motion is going to be periodic. So one of the interesting or important conclusions in helicopter dynamics is that this periodic motion could be expanded in a Fourier series. Now, this you know from mathematics that if you are dealing with periodic functions, they are very suitable for a Fourier series expansion. So essentially, let us look at the flap motion, which is the simplest and important type of motion. You could expand the flap motion like this. So essentially, you would have a steady component. You would have a cosine psi, sine psi component. These are called the first harmonics. You would have a cos 2 psi, sine 2 psi component. These would be the second harmonics and so on. So these should be two here. So again, if I were to write this in a more compact summation form, I would get this equation here, which is essentially a Fourier series representation of the beta. Similarly, we could do this for zeta and theta. So the steady and the 1c and 1s component are going to be the most important coefficients. They are typically going to be the largest coefficients. And coefficients with i is greater than 1 are also known as the higher harmonics. Now, Zeta and beta are actually responses, but theta is typically an input. So the pilot inputs theta 0, theta 1c, and theta 1s, and the remaining thetas are typically all 0. Now, we will later see how the pilot can input these three values to the aircraft, he uses control levers, and so on. Now, there is a phenomena called higher harmonic control where you could use theta. 2c, 2s, 3c, 3s, and so on. And these would typically be provided by a controller to remove vibration or to mitigate vibration. So that phenomena is known as higher harmonic control. But in a typical helicopter, theta would be theta 0 plus theta 1c cos psi plus theta 1s sine psi. This is the collective, and these are known as the lateral and longitudinal cyclic. We'll discuss those in detail later. So I will end my lecture here. We will meet again in our next lecture.